Hi guys and welcome to my YouTube channel and today we're going to talk about this fabulous photograph of penthouse pet Shauna Ryan and I'll explain to you how I put the thing together and what was involved because it's another story behind the picture. <music> Well, welcome back. So how did I get this uh, photograph of uh, Sean Ryan? Well, it started out with an email from a Playboy playmate, Devin Devaskis. She emailed me and asked me if I was interested in going over and taking some photographs of her at her home. And I said, yeah, sure. I'd love to come over and do some pictures for you. Is it possible for me to bring another model with me? She agreed. So that's how come I took Sean Ryan with me. Now, Sean Ryan has been a friend of mine for a long time as I've been a contributing photographer for Penthouse for many years. And I had known about Devin Devaskis because she's a friend of another one of my playmate friends, Kerry Stevens. So it's sort of a little happy family there in uh, Los Angeles with all the playmates and Penthouse pets. And if you're plugged into that kind of scene, then you're gonna get to be able to photograph some of those really lovely ladies. I go over there and I check out the house and I find a really great spot behind the back of Devon's house on her patio area, which is uh, like a wooden decking. And it's a lot of open shade. Now, the great thing about open shade is it's nice and soft. But the bad thing about being nice and soft is you can't create that kind of bright highlight that you need in your photographs. Now, the beautiful thing about today with digital and if you shoot raw is that if you slightly underexpose the image, or if you get it a little too bright, you can bring it back a little bit more. Uh, mostly if you make it too bright, you have a little bit of a problem, but if it's underexposed, you can bring it up. Now, what we have learned to do with open shade is to reflect light back into that open shade with the use of reflectors. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the reflectors. This is a reflector here. This is uh, one side silver, one side gold. Uh, this is the silver side, and here's the gold side. Now, the beauty of these things is you can just, you know, fold them up like this and put them away in a bag and they're easy to carry around. So uh, that's, that's a great thing to have. Uh, I also have another one over here. And this one I put a card inside. And there's also a metal frame that has a, a little piece on here that I can put to an adapter so I can use it underneath someone's chin on a stand so I don't have to hold it or none of my assistants have to hold it. So we use that in the studio, but as you can see, it's pretty reflective. So it's, uh, it's a great, great item to have. You can even get a larger size, which is as big as a person, which is really great, because that can really put some light onto your subject matter. But, you know, medium-sized ones are really good. And so what I did was I got my assistant to set up a large reflector uh, on the decking and to bounce some light back into the image to brighten it up a little, little bit. And you can see in this picture here, it's, uh, it's quite bright. It's not uh, sort of, you know, the flat looking, which is what you would normally get if you just shot in open shade. So we reflected the light back in again, that brought the image up a little bit more, made it a little brighter. And the only thing I would recommend to you is that white you don't have a problem with, but if you use silver, you have to be very careful that you don't over brighten up someone's face and make your model have squinty eyes. So you wanna back it off a little bit and sort of feather it and move it around uh, so that it doesn't do that to the model. Now, if you're working with a professional model, obviously you're gonna get a lot of movements out of them, but you need to help and instruct the model to move back and forth. Now, in these particular pictures, because it was for a member's website, there was gonna be a strip tease involved. And you can see here that uh, Shauna is slowly exposing her beautiful boobs. And I think you can agree that uh, that's pretty nice. So that's what we did. We went around to the back, set up the reflective light into the open shade, and I got the model in the open shade and I was able to move her around within that space. Now, we were able to match a pink little dress with the cowboy hat and I think we pulled it off as being rather cute and sort of sexy. When you get to a point in your career, like myself, you get more availability of professional models. You get to meet a lot of the playmates and a lot of the penthouse pets. A lot of calendars and postcards and other things that I've done, I've also included a lot of those uh, Playboy Playmates because they get the training when they're with Playboy and they come out seasoned and they're more reliable. Now, it's not to say that you can't use non-professional people, it's just that when you use non-professional people, you have to work a little harder to get them to do what you wanted to do. And when you do that, try to make your photo shoot happy, exciting, or enjoyable for both parties or for everybody that's involved. So that's what we did then. We went to the back of the house, bounced the light in, got a great little outfit, did the strip tease, and I think you can agree that we pulled it off 
and it's very successful. Now, if you like that story, you might want to pop over to my website, andrefelixphoto.com, and check out my blog. I've got lots of interesting things that I talk about on there and some great photographs that could inspire you into going out and creating some of your own. You can also download a PDF of a book that I put together called Tips and Tricks, and on the cover is Playboy Playmate, Arena Vornina. And uh, I tell you in the book how I got that shot set up. So pop over there, check out my blog. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you have, thank you very much. And all I can say is thanks a lot and bye for now.